Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television, Television Jamaica, YouTube's channel, or One Spot Media. We also are live on Music 99, gojamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them in to Television Jamaica Facebook page at Television Jamaica or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on CSEC Visual Arts. We will be focusing on my reflective journal too. I am Michelle Brightchinsey. And I am Sean Lawton. Okay. This is a continuation from last week's presentation. So the last time we were here, we looked at the content of the reflective journal. Today, we're going to look on more of the mechanics. So therefore, we are putting it all together. That's right. So the objects, objectives of today's lesson is you are going to be understanding the purpose of the theme. Because a lot of people had some questions about that the last time. Right. Right. We are also going to look at how to select your artist and how to format your text and visuals. And even though we mentioned it before, we're going to mention it again. Exactly. The cover of the reflective journal. So let's go. All righty. All right, so the content that we would have explored the last time, we looked at the cover design, we looked at the artist statement, research of the artist of interest. We also looked at the exploration of ex the expressive forms. Um, we looked at the reflection, definition of terms, glossary, and bibliography. Today, as said before, stated by Ms. Chinsey, we're going to be looking now at the mechanics, how we put it all together. And these things we would have selected based on the questions that persons would have reached out to us about. So we'll be looking at those things specifically today. So, what is the purpose of my reflective journal? So most of you would have started working on your journal from grade 10 to 11. This is, for, in some cases, four to fifth form. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you are doing, you are documenting your process and your progress. Uh, process and progress. What do you mean by that? What oh, do you mean Mr. by Lawton. process and progress? No, your process. <laughs> how you go about investigating, how you go about with your production, the creative process or thinking behind each production and progress. How have you advanced? How have you improved new things that arise out of the exploration for the two years? Yes. You see, one of the things that I like um, about the process and progress that I'd like to just add to what you're saying. Um, when you think about the progress part of it, from a student's standpoint, hmm. well, what I normally do is I normally do a lot of reflecting. Because you reflect to evaluate where you are at so as to determine whether or not you are achieving the objectives that you had set out to accomplish in the artwork. And that is an important part of the process. Exactly. Awesome. So, here is one of the first questions we encountered. Why should I use a theme? No, a theme is an idea that guides the creative process, as we mentioned before, right? It focuses on that big idea, that message behind that big idea. And it also eliminates vagueness and misinterpretation. You imagine you're looking at somebody's journal and you go through it and have no idea or you have misinterpreted. Poor child. Okay, so there's a picture of a, a, the cover of a journal right there. So we're looking on old regal structures. So within this journal, you're expecting to find probably landscape paintings mm -hmm. or anything to do with structures. Exactly. Within this journal. So there should be no misinterpretation as long as you open it and you're seeing that theme recorded over and over and over again. Yes. You see, one of, one of, the, one of the things that we also would like to invite our viewers to, to remember about the theme is that it must be something that is personal. It's not something that is prescriptive 
where your teacher come to you and say to you, um, um, John or Michelle, you know, you need to, to work within this theme because that's what we're working because that's what they or 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 um, still life drawing is going to be you about. You know how much pressure you're going to put on me as a student if you ever <laughs> if you do that. So therefore, I probably have no interest in what you want me to do. You want me to produce a body of work on the theme that you chose. Yeah, and I, and I think what what that does it puts the the, the the student in an unnatural situation where it stifles their interest and their creative voice you know so we want to avoid that as much as possible you know give the students an opportunity to develop their own sub theme so if we have a general idea they can have an opportunity to to say well as it relates to this what is it that i like and what would i like to explore so they have their unique voice in as a part of this creative i was speaking process. to a set of students recently and they asked miss how do i go about choosing my theme so we want to deal with that right now. Yeah. Choosing your theme. All right. You can start with what comes to mind, you know. You want to document it, either sketch or just write it down, but don't rely on only that. You want to research it and see how it can be explored in different expressive form. And we have that matter of plagiarism and the whole matter of cliche, mm -hmm. right? So we need to consider, that's why we have to do the research. Right. And apart from that, we want to brainstorm, create a concept map, right? Brainstorm the ideas, explore personal and intimate knowledge about that theme. How does it relate to you? Remember, this is something you're going to have to be doing for the next two years if you're in um, grade 10. Understand? So, who wants to do something that don't relate to them? You know, this shows no I connection. Don't, I would never want to do that. And, awesome. you know, you mentioned something about cliche. Very important that when you're doing your works, you want it to represent you as an artist. You don't necessarily want to, to do the piece of work and it looks like you know you give them an assignment to do create a composition um using geometric shapes and everybody you, you, the famous heart oh. and the famous oh. flower design oh. um there's nothing about yeah. the, the artwork that is unique about you so when we talk about cliche that's basically what we, we don't want it to look so much like everybody else we Ask want somebody it to, to look do like a you. logo that represents jamaica they're going to give the coconut tree and the sun in the background and black, there isn't more the black green and gold <laughs> Guaranteed. yes you are correct so one of the things that you can do is actually start with a concept map right the concept map you're going to look at people places objects and symbols why would we start with that concept map well, it's very important because when you glance at this concept map, you realize that we're talking about the people, objects, symbols, and places. That captures almost every possible sub-theme that you could develop. So let us say for argument, if we were to give you the theme nature, which is one of the themes oh, that we, that oh, we would have <laughs> we would have every time the, the life what you want out to of do, it. Nature. Because my version of nature <laughs> is going to be different from your version of it's, nature. It's, it's definitely because nature, if we were to look at look at it through the lens of this concept map, we can look at nature through the lens of people. Yes. It can be done through objects. It can be done through um, places. Ooh, and it, ooh, oh I know. I love texture texture of trees the leaves the fauna any yeah exactly and and i can Flora, just imagine fauna, i can <laughs> i yes. can just imagine texture. that exp your approach to nature which is the main idea yeah. and now you would have selected texture yes as your focus that would now be your sub theme yes and that also helps us the audience to know that all oh, that artwork is definitely michelle because she that is her interest right there that's her area of focus and that's that's the kind of thing she likes to bring about in her artwork so it's sort of very important that you really think about your theme properly right mm -hmm. do all the brainstorming necessary definitely explore all angles okay. before you actually decide on what you're going to be doing exactly and this part of, of the, and there's a, there's a critical part of this process um is that how do you come up with that 
sub theme. Brainstorm is very important because what I normally do, and I suspect you might do the same, um, if, if they give me a theme, let us say you gave me nature just now, yeah. right? It's the nice one that to work we with use. a sub theme to narrow it down. But when you brainstorm that process, you actually think about nature but through the lens or context of your personal interests. That's right. So you're brainstorming to get those ideas down. And you write down those ideas. And then you start to know, develop. Well, this is how I do it. I develop sketches this to represent of course, each sketches. one of those ideas documented. And once that is done, I use those ideas now. So if I do 10 sketches, I look at the 10 sketches and say, okay, based on these 10 sketches that I have, which one of them best represent the theme and the sub-theme that I have selected? That is correct. So you can't do one sketch. Some people believe that you can do it like uh, it's perfect the first time, but because we know we are imperfect, we have to do many sketches. Now, the last thing I'm going to say about the theme, not that it is the least, remember, the theme is what drives you through the entire process of your production mm -hmm. to the entire tie thing so you're looking on text and visuals as well when it comes to the theme exactly okay so we're moving on question how do i go about choosing an artist because we mentioned that they have to study artists right right so it, they have to research an artist now how do i go about choosing an artist it was said before but i want to re-emphasize the point the artist must connect with you somehow either it's your expressive form your drawing your painting your graphics your printmaking your textile whatever expressive form you have you want the artist to connect also by his or her thematic approach mm -hmm. or the style or technique that the artist is using now for example here we have two pieces of work, one being the original painting, a, a picture of the original painting for Pablo Picasso, that yes. person we always hear about, and mm -hmm. it's entitled Old Guitarist. We know the history be behind it with Pablo Picasso's Blue Period and yes, so yes. on and so forth. But here we have a student that is looking on Pablo Picasso as one of the artists. See how Pablo Picasso's work complements his. Now, his young guitarist yes, against the old guitarists have things in there as you look at it you see some things that are common right right for example the two figures are there holding a guitar right right there is um some emotional things being conveyed there with the use of color right um there are some more Can, can't you see some more sure that? you see one of the things that i really like about it is that the the, these two images that we have here, they actually help to show, one, the alignment to the expressive form. So we know that this artist is influenced by Pablo Picasso. We also see the thematic alignment because at this particular point in time, Picasso clearly was exploring, um, you know, the concepts related to music or musician and instruments. Um, and the student in like manner decided that, you know, this is something that I would like to do. Um, the, you, you also see technique as an element because you, you notice that both of the pieces, they somewhat mirror each other in terms of the style that is used to render both pieces. And so you see how these um, artists would have connected one through the expressive form, two through the thematic approach, and then three through the techniques that are used. It's very linear and you can see it clearly. We could, even though the theme of the student here is not said, but you can actually guess. Yes. You make a good guess. Yeah. Right? And um, I can't give it away. It was based on something to do with music, okay? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is clearly seen. But also, he was talking about mood and music. So. Exactly. So, yeah. And the blue. 
Oh yeah. The blue in both compositions would have would have been it's screaming mood. It's screaming yeah. mood. It one is, screaming is mood. more pain, and the other one, well, the one from P Pablo Picasso, that blue screams pain for me. But mm -hmm. anyway, we are moving on. <laughs> no, here's another question that came up. It says, "What if I have chosen more than one artist?" What if I've chosen more than one artist? Well, you know that in most cases, you are researching two artists, right? Yes. In most cases, you are researching two artists. And you're to have a minimum of five works. Minimum of five works. You also are critically analyzing the works mm -hmm. of the artists. Right. You're critically analyzing the works of the artists. And you are ensuring to compare and contrast all these works of the artist. But you know something? I've had students that have done two or three artists. Why? Because there's something about these artists' work that, as we said before, that connected to the theme. So two was not enough. One maybe for each expressive form. Maybe another one because of some technique or some thematic approach that that artist used. And that's quite okay to do that. And it's totally understandable because if it is that one particular artist, you're interested in the artist because of, let us say, technique. Technique is not necessarily um, tied to theme or that, 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 that idea, that main idea. Um, so you may perhaps want to shift and focus on, on an artist that explores similar ideas um, that is more in alignment with what it is that you would want to explore. And then that is how you would justify it. But generally, I think most people normally go with just the, the two artists and, and that's basically. Just ensure that you are actually critically analyzing the works of these artists so that the reader a.k.a. the examiner, <laughs> Yes. have a clear understanding of what is happening. And okay? what is the link? Yes, that is what correct. What is the link? Okay, here is another one. Here's the fun part. <laughs> We're in the mechanics now. How do I format my text? You're into that sort of thing. Can you give some advice where that is concerned? All right, so when we're formatting our text, it's very important that the layout, as is seen in this image here, you want to use up the text wrap option that is available to us in Microsoft Word. What this does, it when you type up your explanatory notes, or the notes that gives the description of what it is that we are looking at, it wraps the text neatly around the image and it creates a pleasant image. Um, so this is something that you definitely want to do. You don't want the placement of your text in relation to the image to be disjointed. Not at all. Also, select text that's easily, um, that's easy to read. Stay away from the decorative for fonts. Please stay away from the decorative fonts. Stay away from the fonts that curl a lot and um, all caps. It is okay. It's okay if you're, you, you have cited your theme and you do the text for the cover or your title page or even the, 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 the one that starts. But when you're writing in the body, stay away from decorative text. Also try and ensure that the image that you're putting in this, um, inserting in this part of the journal Ensure that it is clear. Ensure that it is properly mounted. Um, you want to ensure that it has a nice border if necessary, or if you want to use a drop shadow to highlight the image, to cause it to stand out. That is some other option that you may want to consider. Okay, so how do I format my text? Here are four, four tips. So tip number one, all right, so we... You want to take this one? Go uh, ahead. I, I could. So <laughs> tip number one is you want to ensure that when you're taking that picture, do not put the picture on a flat surface and then 
try and take the picture from an angle or from a distance. Because when you do that, what will happen is that when you capture that image, it is going to be angled. And so you'll be looking at the image in perspective. And this will not, will not necessarily give your examiner or the viewer who will be perusing your journal an opportunity to properly appreciate all of the, the aspects of your image. So one of the things that is recommended is that you place that image on a wall. A neutral color. What do I mean? We know neutrals to be black and white. But you want contrast. For example, if your work is predominantly light in color. You don't want to place it on a white background mm -hmm. because that washes out the work. You want to probably put it on a solid black, a really dark background and take your picture. If it is predominantly of black or dark hues, you want to put it on a white background. Exactly, so you right. get that lovely contrast. So that is tip number one. Tip number two. So tip number two. Hmm. Light your works properly. What do you mean by that? You say light your uh, works properly. Don't take <laughs> the photo of the work in the dark. Too many times the work comes up on the page. You can't make out what it is. Oh, you mean the <laughs> grayscale photos that we take. And when you take the, the image, it's kind of hard for you to discern the values in the background versus the values it's that's actually so on the work. Scale. Sometimes you'll be standing in the, in the light and taking the picture of the work. Try to avoid that. You're also going to avoid direct light. Make it indirect. The best place, I take pictures of my artwork, right, in outside when it is day. But I don't put it in direct sunlight. Oh. So you don't want any light bouncing off it. Okay. Or you, you want to take the flash off the camera some of the times when yes. you're doing that as well. Especially so, when you have shiny surfaces working with. That is correct. So make sure the place is properly lit. Next tip is to adjust your camera settings. Yep, you definitely want to do that. You want to make sure that you have most of the work within the frame and not more space than the work. Exactly. Because we're not necessarily interested in the, the spot girl. No, we want to see uh, the work. We're not necessarily interested so much in the wall. You, you include a little section of the wall if it helps to um, create a, a, an effective emphasis where the work is concerned. But you, you want to really fill the frame of your camera and as and much as possible. And you want to adjust work. it. You want to make sure you adjust it to get clear, crisp, bright images. Clear, crisp bright it shouldn't be vague okay so well but that simply means though miss um miss Jinsey, you would also want to um focus steady the hand and that sort of thing so as to get the capture the details yeah, because why not? if that is not done Remember technically the work is going to be representing you okay so so if you have any questions and what we have done so far, you can send them in on our various platforms. And I will see if I can answer in the final segment. When we come back, we answer your questions and wrap up. Stay with us. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.
Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from... ...relative to how well you, you handle the medium because they know what the, the medium that you're working with. They can also draw conclusions relative to the ideas that you're, you're representing in the work by virtue of the, the, the title that you would have attributed to the piece of work. So it is important. We're not just asking you to do this because we want to give you more work to do. Um, it's, it, it works. It, it helps with the, reflect, the, the, the critique of their work. Okay, remember you're not only labeling finished pieces, but you have your steps. Yes, this is the process. So for step one, step two, step three, you want to label them. Step one and all of your descriptive notes. Step two, step three. For some of you don't, not using steps, it is the before, the during, and after. It is not limited to three, but you must have at least three for the before, the during, and, and the, the after. after. So, how do you lay this out on the page? Now, I, I'm giving you two examples. Here is an example 
of a student who laid it out on the page. So these are the steps. So the examples are next. So this is by column. Exactly. Where one picture fall below the next, one step fall below the next, and all of the description, they are written to the side. Exactly. That is one way. Now in the next frame, we have a student who decided to lay the works out in columns. Mm -hmm. In rows. In rows. Well, first was column, this is row. Right. And the description go below. So you have an example there. Exactly. To follow, right? No. After you have completed your steps and you are showing your final work and you have labeled it, remember we have stated before the that an you do a critical, critical analysis. analysis. We cannot emphasize this enough. So here's an example of a student who have the work finished doing the describing, the analyzing, interpreting, judging, and at the base there, they have the comparing and contrasting. Now, if you, if you can see that, that's the work of another artist. That's the work of the artist that student actually looked at. Looked at. Exactly. And this is one way of doing it. Okay? So, this is a very good example. It's not a bad example at all. Because not it at gives all. everybody an, an opportunity to reference what it is that your critique is talking about. So, when we have the image there, we know that you know, the description, we see whether or not the description is an effective description based on the image that is provided. We know that it's, it's an effective analysis based on the image that is provided, so on and so forth. We also, I like the, the inclusion tool of the artist's work that they do in the compare and contrast because when you have both images, irregardless of what is written, the compare and contrast we will see clearly between your work and the artist's work to see how your work would have been informed by same. All right, so we are at the cover again, from cover to cover. Again, it's like merchandising. What is on the cover invites the reader into the work. The cover must be a balance between text and images. So here again, we have the same example of the old regal structure Mm -hmm. right and you're seeing the painting of that structure so you're getting an idea that this child is focusing on drawing or painting buildings and in the landscape Definitely. yes here's another example so in the next example you have exploring surfaces mm -hmm. so i'm seeing samples of printmaking that sounds like somebody I'm we all seeing... know <laughs> <laughs> it's sorry it's my weak spot so i'm seeing background texture so I'm looking on the typeface, right, and the big pictorial designs. So this, to summarize this all, you're looking on the selection of your theme. Right. You have to unpack the theme in preparing the journal. Yes, definitely. All right? Good. You have to select the appropriate artists. You have to do your formatting and arranging of text and visuals. And you have to, students, consider your cover. After you have finished the piece, look at the cover. Alrighty? So, it's now time to put it all together. Right? Right now. Students, right now. Put it together. For those persons who have a little bit more time, Fifth form I'm talking about, the grade 11, yes. put it together. Fourth formers, do not wait. Start putting it together now. Okay. All right. So we hope that the tips that we would have shared with you today will actually help you in your completion of the, the works. Now, that's all for today for CSEC Visual Arts, My Reflective Journal. We hope you grasped most of the points that we discussed. You can watch a repeat to, of today's lesson on JNN today at 4 p.m. and in the Schools Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. Also, we will be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I am... I am Michelle Brightchidsey. And I am Sean Lawton. Pleasant viewing. Stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. for COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before